uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Bick. I'm currently uh, with the Mathematical Institute of the University of Oxford. And first of all, thank you very much uh, for having me here and uh, uh, for letting me present some of my recent work uh, on Kuramoto phase oscillators, or in more particularly going beyond Kuramoto phase oscillators. Some of the work that I'll uh, be talking about today is joint work with Pete Ashwin uh, at Exeter. And uh, um, yeah. So let me go ahead. Uh, what I'm interested in uh, are network dynamical systems. So these are networks of dynamical systems. Each node in the network is uh, a, a system. For example, an ordinary differential equation. This could be a model uh, for a motor in a power grid. This could be a neuron or uh, some other oscillatory system. And uh, what, I'm, uh, what I look at is networks of such systems, how they interact. And there's two important factors uh, that uh, two important factors that give the interaction that gives rise to dynamics is on the one hand, it's the network structure. So that's the, the topology of the network, who interacts with whom in the network. And then there's the network interaction. Uh, and that means if you know who interacts with whom, you have to specify how uh, one oscillator interacts with another oscillator. And the main question that's been uh, driving some of my research is uh, how the structure, the network structure, and the interactions uh, shape the, the network, overall network dynamics. So there's two assumptions that I, I want to make throughout this talk. The first assumption is the assumption of, of weak coupling of these oscillatory units. Uh, and that basically means that you can boil down uh, the state of each of the oscillators just to phase variables. So you parameterize uh, the state of this oscillatory motion by its phase. The second assumption uh, that I want to make is that the oscillators have identical intrinsic frequencies or almost identical intrinsic frequencies. So uh, most of the results uh, hold for almost identical frequencies. There's some notable exceptions, but I'm, I'm not going to uh, talk about this today. And uh, the, um, uh, the type of models uh, that you get if you do, if you consider weakly coupled systems, uh, probably one of the most famous models that have been considered uh, is the Kuramoto Sakaguchi equation where you have a, a network of phases that all evolve. And uh, they evolve according to, um, first, some intrinsic frequency that can be seen as a, uh, as a property of the oscillator. And since we uh, assume them to be identical, uh, they all take the same value. So that's basically the frequency that the oscillators would evolve with if there was no interaction along the network. And then in its classical form, there's network interaction. Um, uh, the the kuramoto sakaguchi equations, uh, as they were put originally, they have an all-to-all -all coupling topology. Uh, so each uh, node, each phase oscillator interacts with each other phase oscillator in the same way. And the interaction is, is additive, and it's mediated by a sine function. So it's just one harmonic. And uh, on the right-hand side here, it's uh, one harmonic of the phase differences plus some phase shift parameter. So there's two things. There's one harmonic, and the other thing that is uh, worth considering is that the uh, interaction is additive. So if I know the states of two other oscillators, the effect that these two oscillators have on one other oscillator is additive. So they just add up. And if you want to understand the dynamics of such systems, it's actually fairly simple because there's two phase configurations that can appear as stable states in the system. One uh, would be uh, the attractor where all the phases or the configuration where all the phases are equal. So that is full phase synchronization. This is denoted here by S. Or there's the configuration where the oscillators, or the phases of the oscillators is spread all over, uh, what, equidistantly around the circle. And this is denoted by D. So this is a, a display state configuration. So this is uh, a commonly used model. Um, but if we look at uh, the dynamics of, of real world uh, networks of oscillators, and here uh, in this example, I want to focus on neural oscillators. There, there are several of these assumptions that you put in, into the Kuramoto model uh, are not satisfied. On the, on the left-hand side, on the top panel, I have some, uh, I've found some data from rats that run around through a maze. And there is, uh, on the y-axis here, there's a number of cells. 
And depending on what cell uh, it is, it becomes active when the rat is in a particular part of the maze. So uh, on the x-axis, you have time, and you can see that the rat uh, moves throughout the maze. And these recordings are taken as the rat is actually moving. So this is with external input. But even if you take the external input away, you can see that there's some sequential dynamics, some sequential activation of these neurons that still take place without network input. So they're generated by the network itself. And uh, one, uh, one reason for this, or one uh, effect that is believed to play a role in this, is non-additivity of interactions. So uh, on the right-hand side here, you see uh, an experiment done in a neuron where you give two pulses simultaneously or almost simultaneously. And uh, instead of if you give two pulses, then the joint response to being the arithmetic sum, this is here in this panel B denoted by this, uh, by this bold line. So this would be the arithmetic sum if there was an additive integration. Instead, you see if the inputs come roughly at the same time, you have a nonlinear amplification of the input. So this is some non-additivity. So I want to uh, take these uh, dynamical phenomena that are given by this non-additive dynamics, and I want to go back to the phase oscillators. And I want to uh, take, an, an, take this as an analogy. So uh, imagine uh, you have a, a couple of rats that are sleeping, and uh, they might be thinking about two different positions in the maze. How could you encode this in a network of oscillatory units? So uh, here I've taken a network of uh, six phase oscillators in three populations of two oscillators each. And one way to encode this, for example, would be to uh, look at spatiotemporal patterns. So this is uh, shown here on the left-hand side. So let me explain uh, in a minute what you actually see here. So on the y-axis, you see the oscillator. On the x-axis, you see the time evolution. And the coloring gives you the phase of the oscillator. And what you can see here is that uh, over time, there is a number of oscillators in this network that remain at roughly the same phase, where another part of the oscillators, they evolve. They're faster or slower than the other oscillators. So in some sense, they're more active or they behave differently. And that relates somewhat to the experimental data that uh, I've, seen, uh, I've shown you before. So one position in the maze could be that one network, uh, one part of the network is more active than the rest. And another position in the maze could be represented by some other part of the network being, uh, well, faster than the rest. So the first question I want to ask is, well, what is this, well, localized frequency symphony? We have two different frequencies in a network of identical units. So how can we characterize this? So uh, one, uh, one simple model to look at this is coupled populations of oscillators. So now I consider a, uh, a, an equation that corresponds to interacting populations where I denote the phase of uh, the oscillator K in population sigma by theta sigma K. Now the evolution of this oscillator is given by some what well, joint state of the other oscillators. And if you just have one population, I've already mentioned that there's two configurations that may be of interest. It could be full synchrony in the system, or this could be display phase configuration. So this is denoted by S or by D. If you now have multiple populations, then, for example, you could imagine that one population is in, in fully synchronized, so in, in this S configuration, and the other population is uh, fully synchronized, so also in this S population. Or you could have mixed states, that one population is synchronized, the other one is desynchronized, and so on. And the same thing for three or more population, and that's the, uh, that's the notation I want to keep throughout the talk. And now you could be interested in, in frequencies. And since I talked about uh, localized frequency synchrony, uh, we can define the asymptotic average frequency just as the temporal average of the instantaneous frequency, the instantaneous frequency being the instantaneous change of phase. And then I define a localized frequency synchrony pattern as uh, something as, as a uh, dynamically invariant set that has the following properties. 
Namely, all oscillators within one population, they all have the same frequency, but within, uh, if you compare oscillators in different populations, they have distinct frequencies. And that's exactly what we saw before, that some, uh, some part of the network is well, evolving faster or slower than some other part of the network. Let me give you an example where we have two populations of four oscillators, and again, uh, this, uh, uh, this is the same, uh, the same kind of plot that we saw before, where on the, the y-axis here, we have the different oscillators in the different populations, and on the x-axis, you have time. And you can see that relative to the first oscillator, the entire population, the entire first population uh, is, well, evolves at exactly the same phase speed, because they all stay the same, because they're actually exactly phase synchronized. Whereas the other population, they're evolving at a different speed because you can see that the color changes constantly. You can actually show, uh, or you can compute numerically, that there's chaotic fluctuations. But the most, the important point is that here you have localized frequency symphony. One part of the network uh, evolves at a different frequency than the other part of the network. So uh, you can, uh, you can then characterize them more rigorously, but I don't want to go too much into the details here. So let's get back to our example where we have about the cat streaming, potentially about uh, being in two different positions in the maze. And uh, well, one way to potentially encode this, I argued, would be through localized frequency synchrony, where one part of the network behaves different than another part of the network. But while the cat is sleeping, and this is what you saw in the experimental data, you actually saw transitions from one neuron that corresponds to uh, the cat and rat being in, in one position or in one location of the maze being active to, well, basically where the rat went next. And uh, that, that corresponded to the, a neuron that relates to another position in the maze becoming active. So in terms of our phase oscillator network, we would like to see transitions from one configuration of localized frequency synchrony to another configuration of localized synchrony. So the question is, can one of these patterns of synchrony dynamically switch to the other? And uh, to give away the punchline straight away, the answer is yes, it is possible. And uh, in the next few minutes, I want to explain to you uh, how this is possible and what a, a possible mechanism could be that gives rise to some uh, to these kind of, to these kind of switching dynamics. So, in order to explain this to you, I need to uh, tell you a, a little bit about theory and uh, a possible mechanism that can give rise to switching dynamics, and that is the heteroclinic connections between metastable states. So what do we have? Uh, we have, we assume that we have a finite collection of saddle invariant sets. I uh, denote them by HU, uh, and they have stable and unstable manifold, and we assume that the unstable manifold of, of one is uh, connected to the stable manifold of the other. And then we can uh, impose additional stability conditions so that for the dynamics near to such a construct, you actually see switching dynamics. It will spend some time close to one saddle, switch to the next saddle, and so on. Of course, you could argue this is not structurally stable, but uh, assuming some extra assumptions, you can find these to be structurally stable in certain classes of systems. So let me give you the results. So if we consider, for example, three populations of n equals two oscillators, and that's the system that uh, I showed you simulations with, then uh, you can actually find such heteroclinic networks between not saddle points, but saddle invariant sets that are Tora. And they correspond to these localized frequency synchrony patterns. And uh, uh, th these equations look quite daunting. There's two things to keep in mind. One thing is that on the one hand, we have coupling within the population, but the coupling between the population, these are these terms here, they're all non-pairwise, they're non-additive. And uh, this is exactly this non-additive interaction that can give rise to such switching dynamics. 
And the theorem is that there's an open set of parameters in this system such that this is a stable heterogeneous cycle between distinct patterns of uh, frequency synchrony. And this is denoted here in this, this little diagram that you can see some sequential synchronization and desynchronization. So uh, this is just a result for a very small network, but you can start using this as building blocks to consider on the one hand networks uh, where populations have a larger number of uh, oscillators within each population, or you can build networks that have, uh, that have a larger number of populations. For example, here you can see some decision process that first population one is desynchronized, then population two is desynchronized, and then either population three or four desynchronizes. And that gives you these spatial temporal dynamics between localized frequency synchrony patterns. So I believe uh, my time is almost up. So with that, uh, let me conclude. So I've uh, talked a, a little bit about phase oscillator networks and global dynamics that arise through the interplay between network topology and generalized interactions. And these are exactly these non kuramoto interactions where on the one hand, and I didn't uh, I didn't go into the details there. We have not only first order, uh, first harmonics, but also second harmonics. And at the same time, we have these non-additive interactions. And that was exactly what is believed to play a role in these neuroscientific experiments or the mechanism in the neuroscience that give rise to these switching dynamics that you see. These networks ex are experimentally accessible, and there's no amplitude variations that are necessary to give these dynamics. In terms of the outlook, you can ask, Questions, for example, well, what kind of heteroclinic structures can give rise to such dynamics? And there's many, many other questions that can be asked. So, uh, well, thank you very much for your attention. I have to acknowledge uh, a number of people that I've had uh, the pleasure to work with and discuss these things with. There's a number of references. I have to acknowledge my funding. And uh, if you're interested in these dynamics or in these uh, topics, please do send me an email. So thank you very much uh, for your attention.